Good morning, my name is Dario Croccolo, I am professor at the University of Bologna and uh, I am a member of a maiden project. Uh, today I will going to present a paper dedicated to the fatigue response of as built direct metal laser sintering imaging in steel and the effect of aging machine and pinning treatments. As I told you before, this is a, a paper that um, uh, is um, realized under the umbrella of this um, project, uh, A Maiden, that is uh, funded by uh, the European Community um, into the Horizon 2020 program. And this project is dedicated to the advanced design rules for optimal dynamic properties of IBDT manufacturing products. So this is the reason why I'm presenting the fatigue response of uh, a particular material produced by this technology. The consortium of the project is, uh, as you can see here, the uh, faculty uh, of mechanical engineering in Kraljevo, University of Kraljevo, Serbia, uh, the Dean Department of Industrial Engineering, University of Bologna, Italy, and uh, there are then three uh, companies, Topomatica, uh, Studio Pedrini and Plamingo uh, that are involved in producing and controlling and checking the, the specimen that we have produced, the, the product that we have produced with the additive manufacturing technique. And uh, here you can see uh, the uh, tasks that uh, are uh, uh, in charge of the different uh, um, partner, and particularly the University of Kuyevach uh, uh, are in charge of the editing, manufacturing, 3D printing, producing of uh, the sp test specimen essentially, and the uh, um, Unibo. Uh, so, uh, our uh, task is to, to perform the experimental mechanics. Uh, and so to present uh, the fatigue response test. And the other partner are dedicated to the measurements, uh, and manufacturing and rapid tooling of uh, the components. As I told you before, the paper is dedicated to the fatigue response of this build, the direct metal as a sintering imaging steel. The um, specimen has uh, been produced by this uh, uh, editing manufacturing machine, the EO Synth M2080, uh, that is present in the labs of the uh, Rakuyevac uh, faculty. And um, give an introduction on what we are going to, to see du during this uh, presentation. We have um, a Marigin steel MS1 as a promising material for reality manufacturing that we used in order to track uh, the possibility to uh, use this material for a mechanical and aeronautical public uh, pub, uh, application. And this uh, material has a high density a hardness up to 50. Um, Rockwell C um, and uh, this uh, property is reached after the aging heat treatment. Um, the material has an high corrosion resistance and a very high static strength. So the UTS is greater than 2000 megapascal after the aging treatment and um, there are a few studies uh, on high cycle fatigue properties uh, uh, and particularly very few studies or no study uh, dedicated to uh, the as built state because uh, the as built state means that uh, we don't um, perform any kind of machining after the production of the specimens, so they are used uh, as they are 
Bjelce or as they are after the production system. Going to the motivation, there are uh, serious drawbacks uh, that may arise from missing post-processing and essentially we consider also the aging treatments uh, that could, could be applied or not uh, um, and that is because uh, there is a poor surface finishing that is uh, rough uh, in uh, surface uh, with an eye roughness uh, acting uh, as a correct trigger as you know uh, there is also a high tensile, tensile residual stresses uh, raising for, from the uh, stacking process, uh, which cannot be relaxed without aging. And th there is no extensive study in the literature clarifying the pros processing treatment. And so this is the reason why we consider the, the, the present or not of uh, the uh, treatment and the machining uh, after the production system. Uh, we wanted to, to investigate the joint effects uh, of the e-treatment, the machining and the shot being that is uh, an important post-treatment uh, uh, applied to all the material of the specimen produced by the additive te manufacturing technology. So, in such a situation, we uh, obviously consider the um, third case that is uh, the as-built or as-fabricated state uh, of the material. In a previous study, we have considered uh, the three uh, um, orientation of the specimen inside the chamber as you can see, vertical, slanted, and horizontal, depending on the direction of the uh, construction. Uh, the vertical direction of the disposition of the layer uh, is the most common, but uh, we wanted to uh, understand uh, and discover if the different orientation in the chamber um, uh, could have effect uh, on the results, uh, fatigue results. And then uh, we considered uh, also the allowance in specimen, in specimen gauge before the machining operation. And therefore you can see here that we uh, consider nine different sets of specimen in the plan of uh, experimental test. And the, the results uh, are uh, uh, collected here in this uh, SN curve, we have the 56 data uh, that are probably the most important uh, number of the, la the larger number of data collected for this kind of material uh, in the fatigue curve. And we can state that uh, no effect. Uh, uh, arose uh, for the uh, different uh, combination of uh, allowance uh, and uh, direction, build direction. So, starting from this point, uh, from this fact, uh, uh, we considered uh, the new uh, test campaign uh, with only the vertical direction, uh, since uh, the other two directions are not uh, uh, um, significant uh, in the results of the fatigue test and uh, we consider to have uh, or not have uh, the allowance so as I told you before we consider to uh, use the specimen or test better the specimen as is uh, without any machining before testing the, the specimen and uh, as uh, I told you before, also the combination of the aging treatment. So having a look uh, of the table of the test, uh, we can see that uh, we have the presence of uh, machining, no or yes, and the aging treatment, no or yes. 
and therefore we can combine all together and um, uh, we have to consider that for all this kind of test the shot micro shot thinning uh, has, has been applied but uh, um, in the case of uh, uh, machining the shot pinning test is applied before uh, machining the, the specimen. Um, there is a, a, a another cell that is not uh, highlighted here, name MP, that means that after the machine we also tested uh, some specimen that have the shot pinning, micro shot pinning applied, but after we have machined the, the specimen. So in order to understand if the uh, Microsoft pinning applied after the machine has an effect uh, on the fatigue results. Here you can see the specimens and the production system. Uh, as I told you before, we uh, used a, a Eosint machine M218. The layer thickness is set at 40 micrometer and here you can see the characteristic of the micro shot pinning. We use spherical shots with a 400 micrometer of diameter and the 5 bar of flow pressure. Um, the aging treatment is at 490 degrees for 6 hours and the allowance is 0.5 millimeter that is the minimum allowance because we discovered that the allowance has no effect on the fatigue results and finally as i have shown you in the previous slide the set mp means that we have machined the, the specimen uh, with 0.5 millimeter of gauge and then shot pinned it. And therefore it is important uh, uh, to highlight the differences uh, between uh, uh, having machined the, the, the specimen after the uh, uh, micro shot pinning or uh, uh, um, apply the uh, micro shot pinning after the machining of the specimen. Uh, the testing machine is uh, a rotating bending machine, uh, typical uh, Moore machine uh, that uh, we have uh, at our lab. We can control obviously the, the, the loads uh, and the number of cycles uh, in a semi-automatic way. Um, we have also measured uh, the, the roughness of the specimen and, and uh, here you can see that uh, uh, in the case of as fabricated specimens we have a, a roughness of 4.1 micrometer. When we machine the specimen we reach a 0.5 micrometer of uh, roughness and after the shot pinning we have a roughness of one micrometer. So the micro shot pinning uh, due to the impact uh, uh, the impulse uh, produces a, a higher um, roughness. So there is a controversial situation in considering if the, the, the specimen uh, could uh, reach a lower or higher level of fatigue resistance in such a situation. The runout was set at uh, uh, 10 uh, to the 7 cycles. Okay, here we have uh, the SN curves, uh, the, mm, the results plotted, and um, as you can see the different lines with different colors represent uh, the different uh, set of specimens and particularly the HM set uh, has uh, a significance uh, in uh, modifying the, the SN curves and particularly the, the fatigue limit. In fact, the combination of machining and aging 
is the only uh, uh, factor that uh, um, has a significance because the other um, lead to a similar uh, trend um, in the fatigue behavior uh, as uh, well uh, uh, highlighted in, in the graph. So our question is why uh, the, the single effects uh, are not so significant in modifying the fatigue behavior. Uh, we can explain this uh, in, by two, two reasons. First, uh, the heat treatment makes my region still more not sensitive. So, uh, after aging the material, uh, if we apply the machine we erase uh, the uh, surface that is not sensitive uh, due to the fact that uh, has been subjected to the heat treatment. Um, on the other hand uh, if we consider only the machining uh, we are not able to uh, erase uh, uh, so many voids or so many defects on the surface that are uh, previously uh, erased by the microshock binning because we have to consider that the microshock binning uh, has applied to all the specimens so uh, it is important to highlight that uh, this uh, treatment uh, is always applied on, on the specimens uh, so it is able to reduce uh, the, the, the porosity and the defects. So the, the, the only way in order to obtain an increase of the uh, uh, fatigue uh, behavior or the, the fatigue limit is to combine together the two uh, factors. So we have to um, apply the, the uh, age in treatment and then to machine the, the specimens. In this slide we now compare the differences the, between the machine and specimen not aged that uh, uh, are considered uh, before or after the microshock pinning because normally when the specimen are built they are subjected to the microshock pinning and then they are machined. That is the, the case HEM uh, in, in the table. Um, um, on the other hand, the, the set M MP uh, means that uh, first uh, there is the machining of the specimen and then uh, they are subjected to the microshock pin. So, uh, as I told you before, we wanted to highlight if the microshock pinning performed after the machining of the specimens uh, could have uh, a benefit. It, uh, uh, on the uh, increasing of fatigue uh, curve and uh, essentially we can see that uh, uh, the effect uh, is present because um, the, the fatigue limit and the, the curve is uh, higher than the other two cases so um, I, uh, although the, the, there is a, a, an increase on the roughness uh, if uh, we perform the microchopping after the machining we have uh, an increase of uh, the uh, fatigue limit and of the fatigue resistance obviously all the considerations we have made before have to be confirmed by the mathematics and therefore we uh, have uh, analyzed uh, the results uh, data by applying the analysis of variance and uh, the significance of uh, the combination of aging and machining effect has been confirmed as well as uh, has been confirmed that it is better to perform the microshot pinning uh, after the machining operation. And here we can see uh, the results uh, uh, plotted uh, as bar diagrams that are very useful to understand uh, what I've said before and particularly it is important to like that uh, the type N, type M and type MP uh, specimens uh, has uh, two um, references uh, 
um, of the uh, fatigue limit, the reference of uh, the fatigue limit in respect to the UTS, so the ultimate strength of the material after the aging, so um, set at uh, 2050 megapascal, and the reference uh, uh, of the fatigue limit uh, to the UTS first, uh, that is uh, the um, ultimate strength before the aging uh, uh, treatment, that is uh, uh, 1100 megapascal. That because um, type N, type I, uh, M, and type MP are uh, not aged uh, specimen, and so they uh, uh, UTS uh, is a UTS first. And as we can see in the bar diagram, if we consider this limit, uh, the rate is uh, uh, set at 38%, uh, 31% and 38% again. So it is a very high rate uh, respect, for example, the best uh, um, combination of uh, uh, factors, that is the combination reported in the type HM, aged and machined that has a 28% of rates uh, respect to the UTS. This means that uh, probably if uh, we don't need to have a very high uh, fatigue strength, uh, we can also consider to use the material not uh, aged because uh, the um, rate uh, of the fatigue limit respect to the uh, ultimate strength is high. In any case, as I told you before, the best uh, result that we can obtain is obviously uh, to combine together the machining and the aging of the material because the fatigue limit is uh, around 590 megapascal. Uh, we also per have performed the fractography and micrography in order to understand what happened during the, the fracture, during the, the failure of the materials. And uh, as you can see here, the failure started from the uh, surface, uh, uh, that is typical way uh, of uh, initiation the, the fracture, but uh, more often uh, from the substrate porosity or voids that are all present and uh, this is the reason why sometimes the machining even uh, especially when we are without the aging uh, treatment that uh, is responsible in charge of the increase of the notch sensitive of the material doesn't uh, lead to uh, any effect or uh, in, in the increasing uh, the fatigue limit. So for uh, here we have a set N and M, so both machine and not machine, and here we have the same for the H and, and HM, in which the structure is very different because it, it, these two specimens has been, have been subjected to, to the uh, aging treatment. And here you can see the micrography of one layer of uh, the beam and you can see also the di directions of the beam that are uh, inclined of uh, 67 degrees uh, each. And uh, without aging on the left, uh, with aging on the right, the structure, the microstructure is uh, different uh, due to the fact that the material has been subjected to the to the aging. Um, in the sample without each return are well visible the, the scanning partners, uh, whereas uh, in the treated specimen there is a more uniform structure and uh, uh, the scanning uh, uh, is uh, still visible but uh, the structure is really more uniform. So going to conclusion, we can state that uh, Heat treatment and machining taken alone do not have a significant effect on the fatigue limits, but if applied together they have a beneficial synergic effect 
and this is because uh, the uh, aging treatment uh, is uh, uh, able to increase uh, the uh, uh, notch sensitive on the surfaces and then if uh, we uh, machine the parts uh, we erase uh, this uh, uh, notch sensitive on the surface and we can increase the fatigue limit of the material. On the other hand we can stay at the Microsoft thinning after the machining as a beneficial effect uh, even if uh, the roughness uh, is uh, um, higher, uh, uh, even if uh, the treatment uh, of the aging is recommended. We recommend uh, if uh, we don't use uh, the aging treatment uh, to perform the Microsoft thinning after having machined the, the specimen. In fact, uh, for these samples uh, in as built condition, uh, we have a fatigue limit corresponding to 426 megapascal that is uh, uh, set at the 38% of UTS first, that is the ultimate strength of the material uh, uh, before the aging treatment. In this last slide, uh, there is a list of publications that uh, have been prepared and published by some of the participants of the project and uh, are obviously dedicated to the additive manufacturing materials uh, uh, um, produced by the EOSINT machine that we have seen before. That's all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.